Hey everybody, word comes that yesterday the Southern Baptist Convention uh, took the Executive Committee met and they have removed the uh, California Saddleback Church uh, from participation in the Southern Baptist Convention of Churches. Uh, the Southern Baptist Convention is, I believe, possibly the largest Protestant denomination in the United States, at least by the numbers. Uh, they, uh, Rick Warren, you might have heard of him. Uh, he was the pastor up until within about the last year of the Saddleback Church. What was the root of all this? Well, the uh, about uh, within the last year or two years here, the Saddleback Church decided they would ordain women. The Southern Baptist Convention has a uh, an understanding, and I'll read it to you from their uh, press release here. The SBC Executive Committee affirmed a recommendation from the SBC Credentials Committee Tuesday, February 21, to deem Saddleback Church as quote, not in friendly cooperation with the Southern Baptist Convention, unquote. Uh, the move comes less than a year after founding pastor Rick Warren left the helm of that, the church and was replaced by Andy Wood and his wife Stacy. While not co-pastors of the church, Andy serves as lead pastor of the church while Stacy serves as a teaching pastor. So the key point is this statement here. The Credentials Committee cited Stacy's role as teaching pastor of the church is the reason for the removal of cooperating status due to the church's lack of a faith and practice that closely aligns with the Baptist faith and message, which states in Article 6 that, quote, while both men and women are gifted for service in the church, the office of pastor is limited to men as qualified by scripture, unquote. So in the Baptist church, you have uh, the office of pastor and the office of deacon, and the saying is that their understanding is that men and women are complementary. God designed them. They work together. It's kind of the original design, but that in terms of teaching and preaching, that only the only a pastor, only a male, a qualified, spiritually qualified male, would be able to serve as the uh, lead pastor of a church. And in fact, in the Southern Baptist Convention, a woman just doesn't even receive the title of pastor. She can use her gifts in different ways, but not in the office of pastor. So in my own denomination, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, we have a similar dilemma, a similar situation. Uh, we believe that they're, just as the Baptists do, that there are spiritual gifts. God gives them out as he will. He gives uh, shepherding gifts to men and to women. However, we also believe, as the Baptists do, that only the men are called to lead in a congregational setting. And so consequently, the Seventh-day Adventist Church does not ordain women to pastoral ministry. Uh, this has been the source of several conflicts for our global fellowship. But the most recent uh, decision has been that, uh, as, as the previous ones, we've never, ever approved the ordination of women. Now, in the Adventist Church, a woman would be able to use her spiritual gifts, but not as a pastor. And I think there's a good grounds for this. Uh, again, the, the Baptist won't even call her a pastor. I think we really probably should have a different terminology. We should probably call a woman a shepherdess or something, something to differentiate between the male role. Because in the Bible, in the, in the pastoral epistles, uh, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus, you see in other elsewhere in, in the New Testament, but especially there, we see that uh, the leadership over a congregation is really given to a spiritually qualified male, and not to a female. And every church, every denomination, count them, for the last hundred years that has uh, gone ahead and ordained women without a, a biblical qualification, they, they've, that's all spun out into all kinds of other spiritual troubles that have pursued and followed. And many of those denominations are very deeply fallen and crashed, crunched today. Uh, we, if we uphold the Bible, though, I think we're in a good place. Uh, sorting this out is a bit challenging. But I, I commend the Southern Baptists. They have, they have nailed this. i um, not sure I would use the same terminology that they use, but they are saying that we're going to try to follow the Scripture. We're not going to have women in, in roles of spiritual leadership over a congregation. That is restricted and limited to males. So appreciate this. This is good. This is trying to go by the Bible. It's, it makes sense. You know, we are living in a time when, when uh, all uh, basically all the categories— uh, that God has defined are being ripped down one by one. And so uh, you have, especially right now, categories in terms of sex, uh, sex roles. Every, every single thing there is being torn torn down because uh, the best way to attack Genesis isn't just to say, well, we don't believe it, but it's to take society and spin everything around and turn it upside down and turn it inside out. And, and so what's happening now is that the 
the cultural elites and the cultural fav- culturally favored people are trying to turn things over and reformat the whole, you know, you've heard of reformatting a disk, all the information on the disk uh, is, uh, is destroyed and you rewrite, you, now you can store data on the, on the, in the disk again, solid state drive. Well, yeah, that's what's being done with, with all things biblical. That's what's being done with all things Genesis is that the things that God, as he's defined them, they're being torn down. Those categories are being uh, re, rejiggered and changed. And so there you have uh, what's going on. And the Southern Baptists have said no. Now, Saddleback Church, um, presumably they've given money to the denomination, and that's going to cost the Southern Baptists uh, some substantial funding, but they're doing it anyway. So Again, a uh, very good thing for the Southern Baptists, good for the world, good for the church, good for the can, good for the bottle. You know, if we follow God's God's way of sorting out life, everything's going to work. If we follow our own notions, of, especially by, you know, what is popular today and what's popular tomorrow, and those things change very rapidly, and then what? Well, then you've got, then you've got nonsense. And so uh, looking for... Uh, finding ways to follow God's way, and uh, good job for the Baptists trying to do it God's way. May their tribe, uh, in in this respect, so to speak, increase. And I hope that we'll continue to be faithful too. This is a, a dilemma. By the way, notice the Saddleback Church is in California, uh, West Coast, and there you have uh, this kind of situation where a lot of times the newer progressive things, which are all regressive, if they're moving away from God's plan, they're regressive. I mean, that's just basic. Uh, but those things uh, tend to come out of the far left coast or the far west right coast. And so uh, inter- interesting how those things come along and they all are ripping down God's categories and we want to uphold God's categories. As we do that, his blessing will be upon us as a people. As we deny that, there will be a great uh, negative outcomes. So, uh, interesting development, very interesting. Uh, not to say that every single piece is in order in, in my church or in the Southern Baptist Convention, but uh, may may God's blessing be upon everybody who's seeking to be faithful and the Lord's blessing be with them. So, interesting piece of news today. Uh, surely you'll hear other th- people moaning in the, in the news cycle uh, about how behind they are. I would say, though, that if they're following God's pathway, which is to make a distinction between God's requirements for spiritually qualified leadership in a congregation and human requirements, then uh, then they're way, way ahead. And it, we are regressive. There's really two realities. There's God, there's reality as it is, God's reality, and there's then our reality as we legislate it, as we, as we sort of whip it together ourselves. And as we do that... Uh, we always find ourselves moving further and further away from the divine ideal, the ideal of the word. And so uh, let's stay close to the word and God will bless us. Uh, it'll be good for the men. It'll be good for the women. It'll be good for our children who need to sort of see actual creation, the creation order roles of a, of a actual male sex person, of an actual female sex person. Uh, God designed it. He's the designer. And so I'm going to go by the, the manual and that's always going to come out better. Hey, the Lord bless you today.